Hey there, welcome to the Mini Sculpting Super Show. I'm your host Tom Mason and today I'm going to review Bees Putty Triple Firm. The Mini Sculpting Super Show is powered in part by Sculptomo Toys. See everything they have to offer at SculptomoToys.com. Bees Putty is a professional bakeable polymer clay that is wax-like, pliable, and comes in many different levels of um, softness to firmness. That's right from their website, and I couldn't agree more. Uh, this is a really neat polymer clay designed by a very talented German sculptor named Stefan Nihus Eliamann. And I think I pronounced that right. I actually asked him for clarification because I wanted to make sure that he did that. And you can find this excellent putty at www.beesputty.com. That will redirect you straight to... Uh, the main site where you can actually uh, pick up multiple different types of, uh, of the putty as well as some really cool tools that Stefan makes. But this review is specifically covering the Triple Firm variety. Uh, this was very graciously sent to me uh, by friend and patron uh, Stephen Martin. So thank you, Stephen. And I, I wasn't sure how I wanted to go about this. So uh, to do the review, to because I, I wanted, I didn't want to like just do a quick little bit. I wanted to do a whole miniature, but I didn't have time to do something large. So I decided to make a small little gnome. And so yeah, that's what you're seeing me sculpt here. And you know, this is a great quick tip and, and and this was a very excellent kind of test working figure and I would suggest anybody who just wants to kind of get their hands dip their hands into trying some sort of new material is to do this this thing as well you know I just all I did was I I took a piece of wire fold it in half and just basically had it stick straight up I did kind of bend it and curve it just a little bit but you just have that very simple base. You don't have to worry about arms and legs or posing. And then just start building up on that. You know, you could do a, a bust of a figure or a, a, a smaller kind of character like I'm doing here. Okay, but back to kind of more of the specifics of working with Bees Putty. So I wanted to disclose this in order, you know, so this is a polymer clay. So I basically treated it just like I would any other polymer clay. That means I make my armature, I put on a thin layer of green stuff over the armature, and I'm sorry I, I, for, I wasn't even thinking about that I should record that uh, at this time, but put a very thin layer of green stuff on it, and then you apply a thin layer of bees putty on top of that. Now you do that all while the green stuff is still wet uh, and uncured, wet is a bad term, but uncured, so that uh, the poly clay actually fuses with it and sticks to it. Because if normally when you put a poly clay on the wire armature, uh, especially with like Fimo and Super Sculpey, it's not really sticky enough and to, to stay on. So you need something for it to bond to, and, and that's what the green stuff will do. And then once that sets up, uh, I go on and just add more of the poly clay. Now, the main reason I'm telling you this is not to reiterate the processes that I use, even though that's good because I get a lot of the same questions, but to tell you about something I didn't realize you could do with Bees Putty at the time of making this miniature. This figure is actually, uh, I'm sorry, the figure, this putty, Bees Putty, and I believe you can do it with any type of firmness, you can apply directly to the armature. Now it's not as sticky as Green Stuff or Procreate, but it's much it has much more of a, a grip to it than, uh, say, Fimo or Super Sculpey. So, what you do is you can apply it fairly generously, or you know, a little carefully, to the wire armature, build it up. You know, it's going to be very rough. You're not going to want to try and make any fancy detail or anything. And then once you kind of get into shape, you know, make sure it's it's pressed nice against and firmly against the wire because you don't want the, there to be air bubbles or cavities underneath. Well, then you can take the piece, bake it for a very short amount of time, and I'll get more on that later in the review. Well, you can bake it and then 
come back and add brand new fresh bees putty to uh, the the miniature and it actually will stick to the um, the baked bees putty I actually tested it out on this figure after it was baked just to make sure what I was hearing was true and it's absolutely true the the uh, bees putty will stick to itself uh, even just putting a little bit on a cured area rather than you know completely surrounding it I was really surprised at how well it stayed even when you would blend it down and smooth it right into the figure so I think I'd still feel more comfortable doing it in that kind of early stage where you bulk up the figure a little bit and then you're putting you're basically covering the entire baked area again with new clay but it is nice to know that if there's one little addition you want to add and you don't want to use green stuff or procreate you could do that with more bees putty if you're you know your figures made out of bees putty so this actually isn't my first time using bees putty uh, I had used, oh, I can't remember which one it was, I feel like it might have been Summer Firm or just, it was one of the earlier ones and the the putty, the Bees Putty worked great. It, it was very easy to use. Um, I sculpted, uh, I actually used it for some conversions uh, and it worked great, it was totally fine. But it, I just didn't care for it too much because of how soft it was. It was just a preference thing. You know, some people prefer their clays and putties with a more firmer uh, resistance, and others like it very soft. Well, this was too soft for me. However, when I got the triple firm, I liked that a lot more. Uh, it was much closer to what I was expecting from uh, what I'm used to just by working with Fimo, but had some very different qualities and feelings to it as well. The number one difference that is most apparent is that it actually kind of, while it still worked most like a, a polyclay, it really kind of felt like a putty, like green stuff or procreate. What I mean by that, it's not, it's not quite the same, but it has a little bit just a little bit more of that bounce that you, and pull that you see and get with with the putties rather than the polyclays. And that's probably because it's has that slight waxy feeling, in my opinion. I've never really sculpted with wax, but it, it, it does kind of like have a slight bit of that texture to it when you're working with it. So you can use some of the same tricks on this that you would if you're sculpting with putty. Things like plucking or kind of when you're trying to move a large area all at once to kind of have stuff pull together. It's not quite the same as putty, but you do get some of that, that same effect just because it is, you know, it's a polyclay, so it's not quite as gummy and, and stretchy. But it was nice to be able to, you know, kind of utilize some of those same techniques and and especially because the putty is a little stickier, you know, things go on and they stayed on a little easier when I was applying them to the figure. And on the other hand, I can use pretty much all the same techniques I use when I'm sculpting with polyclay. You know, the figure is workable until I'm completely done sculpting it. So I can go, I can work the whole figure, I can go back to different areas if I want. I can, you know, you can use metal tools to really smooth and the, and the clay shapers to just kind of push and nudge. And, you know, you, uh, you can smooth it out with uh, isopropyl alcohol or I've used, uh, I think the terpenoid should work the same. I'd have to double check with Stefan with that. I haven't tested it, but I would assume it would break it down similarly. And so that was that was very I was very glad for that. So here's some final thoughts and my final verdict. I I don't like to change the way I work very often. You know, I I, I like to be more focused on finding one material or one or two materials that really work for me, and then I focus on mastering the techniques 
need to do that. You know, if I'm sculpt trying to get better at hands or, or, or faces, you know, I just focus on that and try and master that material. So I have to admit, it was very hard for me to want to give another putty a try or polyclay. Well, <laughs> this is B's putty, so it's polyclay, call the putty. So I guess I can say either one. However, uh, I'm really glad that I gave this another shot um, and sculpted this miniature. Uh, the putty worked very well, and I, and I gotta say, one of the biggest reasons I'm excited to uh, work with this some more and try it out again is because of the the aspect that you can put bees putty directly onto the armature. I really like that. It's 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 pretty finicky to put have to put a layer of green stuff over the armature, then add your poly clay, then let it cure. You know, in this case, you put one layer of material on and then bake it. So it's a lot easier to keep things under control. And then you can very easily carve it off. You know, if you were to just put green stuff on the armature, let it cure, then add the Fimo or Super Sculpey, it doesn't stick. And it might work with uh, with Bee's Putty, but I don't think I'd want to try it. I think I'd much rather just put a layer of Bee's Putty on it, bake it real quick, and then be done. I think the only downside, and it's a personal downside for me with the Triple Firm, is it's still just a little bit on the soft side for me. It, it's doable, it's workable, but I'm used to my clay being just a touch firmer than this. But that's a good thing because they actually sell another version of the clay called Quadruple Firm. So it's the next step up. And I'm very excited to uh, get a box of that and sculpt another uh, I've got I'm gonna sculpt another little buddy for this gnome and so that'll be a great comparison because it's even kind of the same miniature so I'll be able to really get a sense of how it works even with the the same kind of figure so I love Fimo I've been using it for years but my final verdict and recommendation for you is if you especially if you're just getting into this and want to try polyclay over putty go out and get bees putty give it a try you know um if you have a sense of your your the the kind of firmness of material you want then you know choose accordingly uh he actually sells some pretty some smaller containers so you can get kind of a variety very cheap if you want to test and find out kind of which one you prefer but there's just seems like there's a lot of really good benefits uh to this as far as uh, as polyclay's concerned, which is still my preferred way to sculpt miniatures. Ah, I almost forgot. Lastly, I want to leave you with kind of the basic directions on how to bake this. And again, it's basically exactly the same as Fimo, so that's awesome. You you don't want to bake any higher than 280 Fahrenheit or 140 Celsius. I went ahead and baked mine at 260. I think I normally do 265 for Fimo. Anywhere in there is fine. And again, the way I personally did it this time, and it seemed to work great, was I, pr I uh, put the figure in the cold oven and preheated up to 160 and set my timer for one hour. So uh, the temperature basically eased its way up rather than putting it in a, a stark hot oven. And then I turned it off, opened the oven, let it cool off completely. I don't think that part is quite as crucial. I think you can take the figure right out if you want, but I don't know. It just I just like to give it give it that time and it seemed to bake up very well. Well, that's it for my review of Bees Putty Triple Firm. I'd love it if you'd leave me a comment, and let me know what you think about this material. And if you'd like to support the show, you can head on over to my Patreon, join that, or check out my web store at the link down below. Thanks for watching and remember Keep sculpting.